Kamala Harris and her Democrats in America are doing something incredibly stupid, incredibly damaging to their country, with the help of the media left. They are acting, in fact, like traitors, like saboteurs. Harris, of course, is the vice president. She's now trailing Donald Trump in most polls for next week's elections and is so desperate that she is now painting Trump as a Nazi, the, the new Hitler. She says Donald Trump openly admires dictators, including Adolf Hitler. He's unhinged and unstable. In a second term, he's out for completely unchecked power. And her running mate, Tim Walz, and a former Democrat candidate, Hillary Clinton, both said Trump's big rally at Madison Square Gardens today was in fact a Nazi rally, just like a rally at the same venue, an iconic sports and entertainment venue in 1939, deliberately made to be like that rally by Hitler admirers back then and Jew haters and ethnic Germans. There's a direct parallel to a big rally that happened in the mid-1930s at Madison Square Garden. And, and don't think that he doesn't know for one second exactly what they're doing there. Trump actually... Uh, reenacting uh, the Madison Square Garden rally in 1939. This is utter madness. I mean, Trump will probably win the election next week. Do the Democrats really want the world to think that Americans voted for a Hitler? That America's turned into a fascist nation? How would that help America? And what damage would that do? And inside America, are they trying to whip up a civil war against Trump? Trump is uh, Hitler, of course, Hitler's must die. And it's all a lie. The Trump supporters lining up outside Madison Square Gardens know it. I'm here to refute a lot of the insanity that the left is throwing at him, such as he's a Nazi and my parents are Holocaust survivors and I can assure you that he is no Nazi. This man is not a racist guy. This man is a people people. He's a people people man. My enthusiasm for his campaign, I feel that uh, although I'm a hardcore libertarian, I'm suspicious of government all the time, but uh, I really feel that he is is trying to uh, make things better for the everyday American and for business, every for everyone. Some Nazi rally with Jews and Latinos and blacks still supporting Trump. What kind of Nazi rally would have Jews celebrating outside and speakers inside pledging total support for Israel, unlike some Democrats? I'm on the side of Israel! You're on the side of Israel! Donald Trump's on the side of Israel! Now, it is true that the very first of the 30 speakers at Trump's rally today was an idiot, so-called insult comedian, who did tell racist jokes. It was appalling stuff and so stupid. But, you know, the funny thing is that the Trump supporters at this supposedly Nazi rally didn't like it at all. He bombed, and he knew it. There's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay, all right, okay, we're getting there. Yeah, it's just when Trump is trying hard to win the Latino vote, that becomes that idiot. But remember, the Democrats are saying, well, let's see, a racist joke at a Nazi Trump rally fits, but one clown at a Democrat rally for Harrison Walls also told a racist joke against Mexicans, treating them all like thieves. Donald Trump said he was going to build a wall and George Lopez said you better build it in one day because if you leave that material out there overnight. Well, that's all right. Here's a Democrat. Now, the latest Democrat meme, this one, that Trump is the new Hitler, it's going to backfire badly. I think, I think we're seeing it already. Voters have seen Trump as president for four years already. He wasn't dictated then. It's a lie to say he'll be Hitler next time. And most voters will think that a politician, any politician who says he will be a new Hitler, is out of their mind or they're a liar. Which is no wonder that Harris, who's been saying these things, is sinking fast in the polls. Joining me again to talk things political is Lord Geoffrey Archer former British politician, former deputy chairman of Britain's Conservative Party, and now author of 44 books, including the latest, the thriller called Eye for an Eye, out now. Geoffrey Archer, what a pleasure to see you again. Uh, we said we'd have a talk about the election close to the day, that is now. 
Uh, explain this hysteria over Donald Trump. Well, I'm fascinated <clears throat> to hear what you have to say, Andrew, because my own view is quite simply that this goes back to Biden. He really should have resigned a lot earlier, and there should have been a proper competition for the right person to lead the Democratic Party. The result has been that the Democratic Party is now in, in real trouble. And I, I have been saying all along that Trump will win, but I am now absolutely convinced uh, that the Democrats can't win. I think this is why I think you're right that she's so inadequate a candidate. Uh, she's got absolutely nothing to say for herself. She has a record she can't defend uh, and can't explain and no policies that it would be different from anything Biden's done. That This is all she's got, this hysteria, this manufactured hysteria that Trump will, you know, admire as Hitler and probably round up domestic foes and stick him into camps, even politicians. Uh, is it, do you think that's it? And do you think it could possibly work? Because I've got to tell you, Jeffrey Archer, a lot of journalists, more fool them, are buying it. Well, the amazing thing is that Trump's campaign has gone on in its own style, as he always does. And although <clears throat> many journalists have predicted he'd trip himself up, the truth is he hasn't. Because uh, when I saw the poll yesterday from CNN that they were 47 percent each, I knew it was all over because Mrs. Clinton was leading Trump by three points. But in the key states, Trump won them and became the president. And once those two are equal, I don't see that the Democrats are still in the race. And my prediction now is that he might even win comfortably. Uh, yes, I'm seeing uh, some polls like that. I mean, we we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves because uh, voluntary voting, blah, blah, maybe the polls have overcorrected from the anti-Trump bias. We don't know. But I suspect you are absolutely correct. Now, I have to say, there was something about the rally today that the critics will say, this was the most Nazi-like thing he did. See, we were right. I want to get your take on this. Trump well, that was ridiculous. ran a video that was more than... Well, I know, I know. But he ran a video was that was ridiculous, more than... ridiculous, Andrew. I saw time. your video. I saw your video and thought it was ridiculous. He lives in New York. Madison Square Garden has its own special relationship with the people of New York. And that was just going over the top. And if you go that far over the top, it says one thing only, desperation. Yes, and I do. And I think that's exactly what voters will then react negatively to. You can't look desperate because then people shy away from you. They don't rally to you. They rally, they go away from you. Now, but what he did do in that rally was run a two-minute video of the criminals that uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris had let in uh, over the last four years with 10 million other illegal immigrants. Here is some of that video being played in front of the audience at Madison Square Gardens. More than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder have been released into the United States. My 20-year-old daughter, Kayla Hamilton, was murdered in her own room. Kayla's murderer was apprehended by Border Patrol crossing illegally into the U.S. Kayla's murderer had been improperly released into the United States. Jeffrey Archer, is it in fact evil for politicians to point out some of the consequences of not keeping a strong border, not keeping out illegal immigrants? Because there's going to be a lot of people saying, oh, Donald Trump, you're just stirring up fear, uh, demonising foreigners, exactly Nazi-like. No, one has to look at the polls very seriously and see that the what, number one issue in the United States at the moment is the economy, 49%. The second most important issue is immigration, 19%. The third most important is abortion, 13%. I talked to Senator Bradley, a very distinguished Democrat, over the weekend, and he told me the immigration line wasn't hitting. And the other big thing he pointed out was that uh, the Democrats were going for the young black vote. And he was saying, which I found fascinating, that the young black vote is fascinated by celebrity, number one, 
and won't want a woman number two. I hadn't considered either of those, but we're in strange times. Yes, well, uh, Donald, they've both got their celebrities. Uh, Kamala Harris has got the actors and singers. And it seems that Donald Trump has got uh, tech billionaire Elon Musk, who's got Dr. Phil uh, today at the rally, and, and uh, Hulk Hogan. So I think we know where all that's No, going. no, I wasn't but thinking of that, Andrew. It. No, Andrew, I wasn't <laughs> thinking of that. I was thinking that young black people consider Trump to be a celebrity, and that will oh, be Trump a himself. reason they vote for them. Oh, that is interesting. Well... In that case, it's all over in terms of that uh, particular part of the vote. And, of course, the black male vote has been a problem for Kamala Harris. Uh, illegal immigration, though, just broadly, uh, Geoffrey Archer, I have been so struck how that's become an issue right across the West, including in countries we used to be, that used to be a byword for tolerance and liberalism, you know, uh, Sweden, uh, certainly in Holland, in, in, in America... Canada, the Justin Trudeau even said the other, the other day, we've got to cut back on immigration. What is it with the political class of the West that it has lost control of this issue for so long? It's a fascinating question, and I think the answer is, looking at it as, uh, uh, from the view of an 84-year-old ex-politician, it's strictly the numbers, Andrew. They've got out of control and they go up every single year. And that is what has worried the whole of Europe, not just England. And I can assure you that the Italians, who are now turning the boats back, are leading the way. Though if I would dare to say, having watched Australia over many years, you have had a very firm immigration policy, which perhaps we should have taken more notice of. Yes, and it's a vast demographic experiment that's been played on Europe, and I'm not sure how that works out. I don't think it's one you, you can correct if you get wrong. Uh, meanwhile, I've got to say, uh, Geoffrey Archer, I mean, you, you, um, you nearly broke a blood vessel on this show when you were talking about the Labor government, uh, the worst first 100 days you'd seen uh, of a new government. Uh, meanwhile, this government is going from bad to terrible. One of its own MPs, Mike Amesbury, has been filmed belting one of his own constituents. Here he is. Jeffrey Archer, is that called getting in touch with your voters or is it a sign of cultural decline? No, they couldn't have had a worse start. I, and of course, if you've been out of power for 14 years, it's all very new to you. I'm bound to accept that. But even I have been shocked by the unpopularity of the Prime Minister. When Tony Blair was Prime Minister, after one year, he was plus 49% in the polls. The current Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, started off at minus 4% and is now minus 26%. And heaven knows what will happen after the budget on Wednesday. Well, I find it quite extraordinary, these uh, scenes. Uh, uh, look, you, I have to say, being not used to government, I'm not quite sure that flies as an excuse for clobbering some bloke on the street. But anyway, <laughs> Lord Geoffrey Archer, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good on you.